Hello everyone. In this video I will give you a quick run through of the cardiovascular practical for BMS 1032. We will again be using the ADI kits that you've used within your lung function practical so things should look fairly similar for you already. When we start off with our login screen you will log in with the standard login credentials you set up in your lung function practical. In case you've forgotten what your login details are, just come and see me during the practical and I can reset them for you. You then come into our screen where you can select which practicals you want to do. For your practical you'll want to click on CV Practical 2017-18. This will then bring you through to the main page of the practical. And in this system, everything is explained on this on screen, what you will need to do. So it's very important that you read all the information that's given on the software. Before you start, you need to start the actual program. So as you can see, within start, there's a little pencil icon you will need to click on that because at the moment it says no changes can be made while previewing. As soon as you start this practical, you will start to be able to make changes. So we'll click start. It says please confirm you want to finish previewing and actually start the experiment. We acknowledge that and now you can see that the pencil icon is no longer present. This means the time is now running and you can start working on your practice. Please read very carefully all the instructions that are given on the page and as soon as you click, have read everything that's on this slide and click on next you will go to the next step and that's when we can start actually doing some of the measurements. Now let's have a look at all the equipment that you will be using during this practice. When you come into the Innovation for Health building, we will set up everything that you need. So you will have the Power Lab or the AD Instruments Kit. Alongside that you will have some ECG leads to make an electrocardiogram. You will have our pulse detection sensor. You will have a blood pressure cuff. You will also have an automated blood pressure machine and a stethoscope. In the first part of your practical, you will start making an ECG address on one of your fellow students. So again, follow all the procedures on screen. But we will start off with this lead. There's a lot of cables, so make sure they don't get tangled up. And this plug goes into the machine in the bio -Am connector. And make sure if you see the handle like this pointing downwards, that's what you plug in to the machine. If you slightly twist it, it could happen when you're making your ECG trace that the curve looks very weird. But you just plug it in like that. This is then connected to five ECG leads, off of which we will only use three. They're all color coded. You can put those to the side, so this is what we've done. On this page, you can then flick through. To the next page, this will give you some information on how to connect the ECG leads to your participant. For that, you will need ECG electrodes and an alcohol wipe. 
And as you can see on the screen, the three electrodes will be placed on the inside of the wrists and on the ankle on the bony part of the shin. And it's actually color coded. And as you can see on these ECG leads, there are color codes on that. So we know we need the green lead, which will go on the ankle, and then we have the white and the black lead that'll go on our participants' wrists. So now I'll invite our subject, Dr. Andrew Halpin, to come and give me a hand. So, this is Andrew, who you will recognize from being at the practical in some of the lectures. So, for putting on the ECG stickers, we'll always take an alcohol wipe and just lightly wipe his wrists and make it the of your legs. And for this, just feel for the bony bit of his shin. Give that a wipe. I'll throw that away and then for the ECG leads, you can just peel these off and stick these on his leg and on his wrists. So those are set correctly now and then we'll start following our direction. So we know we need white and black, and we know the white plug always goes on the left. I'm um, sorry, white goes on the right, and black goes on your left. And the last one we need is our earth connection, which is the green one, which connects to there. Again, closely read what it says, we can then go to the next page, which then gives us our recording screen. And for this we can click on start, and we're then starting to record Andrew's heartbeat. And you can see there's a nice steady screen. With this, as said in the practical guidelines, use your auto scale function, so which is at the top screen here, when you click on that, that automatically makes the screen as big as it needs to be. This is it, where you can make your recordings. As soon as you're done with this, you can click stop. After you've done this, you can proceed to do the other parts of the practical for the ECGs. There will be one part where your participant will have to do some exercise. For this, we recommend that you simply unclip the ECG electrodes, but leave the stickers on their wrists and legs. They can then do their exercise, and then as soon as they're done with the 30 seconds, sit down, you clip them back in again and again you can then hit start to do your measurements. And that is how you measure the ECG with the ADI instruments. The second half of this practical will focus on blood pressure and you will measure blood pressure with a couple of different ways. One will be with an automated blood pressure cuff, which we'll do towards the end, but the other one will be with a manual SMIC manometer and a stethoscope. And how to measure your blood pressure with a manual SMIC, we'll show you now. For the manual measurement of blood pressure, we will use a stethoscope and a manual blood pressure cuff. The cuff consists of a couple of parts. The first one is the actual cuff which you'll place around your participant's arm. 
there will be a sticker on here which indicates where the artery needs to go, either on the left or the right arm, and you'll have to make sure that the arrow is lay, lined up above, you'll have to make sure that the arrow is lined up above the artery, which you can then wrap around the participant's arm. The next step is where you use this balloon to inflate the cuff pressure. There is a little dial on this balloon, which is out if you turn it counterclockwise releases the pressure when you turn it clockwise you close it so you need to make sure it's closed before you start increasing the pressure in the cuff once you're done you can open it and the pressure releases from that to see the pressure you're increased putting into the cuff you can watch this dial and we know general blood pressure will be around 120 over 80 so when you start increasing the cuff pressure you do not have to increase the pressure on here anything over 180 millimeters of mercury that's very quickly how the cuff works then the stethoscope everyone will have a stethoscope that they can use and as you can see, the ear parts, the other bits are sticking forward. When you want to put the stethoscope in your ears, you have to make sure that the earbuds are pointing forwards into your hearing canal. Otherwise, it'll be more difficult to hear. The bell of your stethoscope is similar to the cardio microphone we also use in this practice where you always hold this bit with two fingers and this is purely due to the fact that if you would use your finger over this because both sides are actually set up to listen for a, bl a blood pressure or a heartbeat if you put your finger like this you might be listening to your own heartbeat so always hold your stethoscope like this, put the stethoscope in your ear and then place the microphone on your subject's arm under the cuff. We will now demonstrate how to do this entire procedure. Welcome back, Andrew. So, first step is the application of the cuff. So we'll use in this case is right arm. Oh, the left cuff. Man. We'll roll up his sleeve. We'll make sure that the cuff is about two fingers wide above the crease of the elbow. And while I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the arteries, the arrows are lining up with where I know his, his artery goes. So we've got that up. You can then do a little test to see if it works correctly. So we'll close our cuff and we'll increase the pressure. And as you'll see, the line, the needle will go up, but it won't go down. If we then turn counterclockwise on the dial, we'll see the dial go down. So that's when we know that we're okay to do our measurement. So at this point, blood can freely flow through his arm, but as soon as we start pumping or increasing the pressure in his arm, we will start occluding the pressure and there will be no more blood pressure going through. So I'm just increasing this to about 140 millimeters of mercury and then I'll start listening. So I'll hold the stethoscope like this and place it in the fold of his arm and then slowly start reducing the pressure.
and if you slowly start reducing the pressure and listen carefully, that's when you will start to hear the Korotkov sounds. And as soon as you hear those, that's what we know. That's our systolic blood pressure. As soon as the Korotkov sounds disappear, that's when we know that we've measured our diastolic blood pressure. And that, in a nutshell, is how you measure a subject's blood pressure using the manual method. So for the second part of this practical, we will be measuring blood pressure. And for this, we will be using several different methods, ranging from the fully automated blood pressure cuff that you might have at home, to the manual blood pressure measurements with the cuff that we've just discussed, and using a finger blood pressure cuff. And the pulse detection method where we'll use our cardio microphone is a very sensitive device that's actually able to measure your blood pressure but also your pulse rate, so your heart rate, within the tip of your finger. So as you remember, we have our blood pressure cuff plugged into extension number one and our pulse pressure cuff or pulse pressure detection method is plugged into input number two. With this test it's very important that you have your participant which has nice warm hands because if you have cold hands that's a sign that the circulation through your fingers isn't that good and this measurement is based on the blood circulating through your fingers so for this pick the subject within your group that has nice warm hands what you'll do you'll place the cardio microphone on their finger wrap the velcro part around their finger and the microphone so it's nice and tight and won't fall off and they can then sit nice and quiet. When you then press start you can see a nice pulse wave at the bottom in the blue line. This is basically my heart rate and this is a picture you want to see if you have a graph like this in blue, that's a sign that you're measuring a good pulse rate. So this was a very quick run through of what you can expect during your cardiovascular practical. I hope you found this useful and that this will help you get through the practical nice and quick and successful. If you have any questions about any of this, please ask either myself or anyone else of the teaching staff during the practical. Thank you and I hope you have a lot of fun during your practical session.